Good morning, my lovelies. It's not morning, it's afternoon. I've been busy pottering around in the garden today because the boss went fishing. He said, I'm going to go fishing because I want to get out of your hair. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> so he just wants to go fishing, period. Now, what you're seeing here are my lovelies <laughs> that I separated last night. These are my crested and variegated babies. So I spent about until five o'clock, nearly five o'clock in the morning. This morning, so it's still today, isn't it? The 30th of December, 2020. And I'm staying up all night just so I can separate these babies from their mummies because it's due. It's long overdue. Hang on. Okay, just go d d d that one because you can't see it. But anyway, why didn't I turn this on? How about that? Okay, sometimes my brain goes out the window. Uh, the door. <laughs> These are Golden Maria Cress and... Crested Corderoi Echeveria Gavoidis and this one are just so beautiful. This is also a Corderoi and look at that beautiful. But then this is my first Echeveria Gavoidis Maria that I separated from the mummy when I first got it. It was a teeny weeny whatever so that was I think three years ago now. I don't know two and a half years three years I can't remember but it's a long time. Anyway Golden Maria Cress Look at all these cresting. I'm just letting them dry up. Look at that. Not beautiful. I love crested plants and I love variegated plants because it's like a mutant, isn't it? Mutation. Oh, uh, look. And there's even a wee little baby, tiny little baby that I found. Uh, well, it's a leaf that's grown and has a little baby. Now, even the tiniest one, like this one, has also crested that I chopped off. Look at that. See? Anyway, so that's for the Golden Maria and this is the Corduroy Crest. And look at those beautiful color. They actually, I think this could be a hybrid of some sort already. The label says Corduroy for this one. Uh, where's the mummy plant? The mummy plant is somewhere. I can't find it anymore. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm lost. Where is my Golden Maria? I haven't potted up my Golden Maria. So this is the Golden Maria, which I haven't potted up. There you go. That's why I'm confused. This is the Corderoy over here that belongs to this one. And this is the Corderoy crested that came with no name. So I got this with no name, but then it looks like this Corderoy. So I have to put corduroy crested as well but that one is uh, look there's only one cresting in the center and the rest is another cresting <laughs> no it's just normal growth and hang on normal growth also with mealybug okay with agavoides they don't seem to be uh, affected a lot most most of the agavoides don't seem to be affected by mealybug they don't care they're tough plants there's only a couple of varieties that I have that are susceptible to mealybug. Apart from that, they're all good. Now the variegated mabina are uh, these ones. They are so beautiful. I still remember when I paid, there you go, this size, $80 for this plant, about that size. Okay, how big are you? So coins very small. So my thumb, there you go, it's only bigger. <laughs> than my thumb, a fraction bigger than my thumb. And I paid $80 for that. So now, and they're still selling, uh, they're still selling high or they're still pretty expensive, especially that one, oh, they're so cute, that one. And oh, so many uh, cute ones. So I got, I might even have a crested one. Hang on, am I gonna have a crested one? I thought I saw a crested one, but anyway. Oh, that's from the other one. The mini bell over here. Okay, so see that one? It's variegated and crested. Come on, focus. There you go, that one. There's another one somewhere. But anyway, that one, look. Hopefully, oh, anyway, it's like half white and half variegated, beautiful. And they actually grow really quick. This one, 
I only paid uh, $20 for this plant, which is small, which is about that much. So $20 for about that much when I bought it. But then now uh, I have all that baby. So almost two years now, should I say about almost two years or a year? I don't know. I can't remember now. I have to look at my little list. Since this is almost the end of the year, I am not prepared to show you my mess. So I've got soil going there. I've got a broken pot with eight months old Orbella. I see these plants need to go in my front garden. It came from a, one plant that was hanging down and it's grown and it's got beautiful stinky flowers <laughs> but all creatures big and small you know uh, so I love all plants I don't care if they smell uh, or everything has a right to life except mealybug you say <laughs> anyway no even mealybug I, uh, there must be some good with mealybug I don't know there must be uh, some good for them anyway the it's the same like flies what are they good for this uh, cobwebs here look oh my Sedevaria green rose supposed to be in the ground but I haven't yet because so many reasons I'm busy and life still has to I still have to live and I only have limited time to work in the garden and plus now that time has now been taken up by me uploading videos there you go so it takes a long time to edit the videos as well and hang on before I kick my coffee here I'm just see look I got the coffee in the ground because I'm full I got nowhere to put plants now this is my Dishidaya of Vata Dichidaya is actually pronounced as Dischidia ovata or watermelon Dischidia. I don't know if you I'm pronouncing that co correctly. Someone corrected me, a friend of mine. But anyway, so this is beautiful plant. This is the last one uh, I found from Yara Lumla Nursery. So if you're here in Canberra, so I got this from Yara Lumla Nursery. And people, seems to me that people have been breaking off the leaves. So that should be full of leaves hanging off that but people I think have been breaking it and stealing it okay for those ones who stole all the leaves look at that they stripped it basically so look there's roots coming out there so I don't want to wish anyone bad but people who steal plants who steal plants it's the 30th so tomorrow the 31st and 31st I always prepare a feast to welcome the new year. So I always have 12 different types of fruit. Okay, let's go and move somewhere else while I'm talking. I have 12 different types of fruit on the fruit bowl. And normally uh, the custom when I was in the Philippines, we would hang grapes on doorways or something like that. It's a bit like the mistletoe, but you don't kiss under that. You actually just eat the grapes. <laughs> You know, it's just to welcome the new year and we used to make bamboo cannon a bamboo cannon that's what I was the term I was looking for a bamboo cannon which we put kerosene and to go boom anyway so these ones now are my babies that are sort of propagating and whatever I'm gonna address the issue of uh, a few of you who's saying who's having trouble with growing String of pearls. Okay, string of pearls is one of the easiest plant to grow and the only reason why your string of pearls are dying is because your soil mixture. You need to have a free draining soil. So, okay, I'm gonna, uh, okay, this is now, I have a string of pearls somewhere now again, but I put it somewhere now, I misplaced it and forgot about it. These are the soil I've taken from the one that's inside the crested and variegated plants that I've repotted and removed. Now this is the soil. This is just an example of the soil that I'm using for my string of pearls. Now the string of pearls, I have grown them in my master succulent soil mix. I have grown them in my intermediate soil mix. And now I'm growing them into this mix because I'm experimenting. This one has got uh, some uh, something in it which is uh, to kill the insects and bugs and nuts that I've got inside. So I'm still experimenting on that and see how effective it is. But anyway, 
this is the sort of soil they need. If you go buy a premium potting mix that's already pre-mixed in, in um, the nurseries, the plant nurseries or the supermarkets that you, where you get it from, I find that with the premium potting mix, they did not like it. So anyway, I'm going to take you to my other string of pearls. Where are you? I just had a string of pearls that fell down, that just smashed up. And I was going to, I lost it. Okay, I found it. <laughs> so this is a string of pearls that got smashed up. And, you know, broken off. So from over there that got hit by when we had that strong wind. Anyway, this one now has just, because it's so long, I just rolled it up. And you can see now the soil mix, or I see fertilizer, that's a seamongous. And I just sort of coiled it. There you go, that's the term I was looking for. And just put it on top of the soil. Look at this pot here. So this is just... Uh, I would say this already been here for about almost a month now and because when we had that storm okay so now hang on and they've dried up they were nice and plump before and they dried up but then anyway this one after putting it there I put it somewhere in the shade and did not water it and so I'm gonna inspect it now to see okay let's go take it here and yes, I do recycle my soil. There's nothing wrong with a good soil, so I'm putting that in the mix. There you go. So now let's go inspect it. So after coiling it, look, it has taken roots. Look at that. That one has got some, oh, look, new roots have formed. See? Look at that. See? Fresh new roots. So it didn't take long. The, so I would say the only reason why you're killing your string of pearls is because you're giving it too much water, I mean too much um, compost. So they don't really like composted soil. So if you have a lot of organic matter in your soil, you are going to kill them. And they do love water. So if you have a free-draining soil mix like this one, see? Look at that. So you got cocoa peat. And I will do a video on how to mix this all up. So now you can see this one here. That hasn't even touched the soil. But I can see some roots growing on the uh, tip there. So that's just bits of string of pearls broken up. And then anyway, I just go stick that in there. And then now I'm just going to water that. You can water that. I'm like really soak it. I can even put that in water and soak it and it will grow now when they're still in this condition so they're all like really dried up i would advise uh you put it somewhere where it's bright light but shaded don't expose it to the sun now i'm going to show you the ones and then if if they grow and after a while say a few months when they're nice and healthy and plump like this one's here then you can put them out in the sun. So those ones, look at that, nice and big and fat. Okay, now see my other one that I've been torturing for a long time now is, see here, just, just exposed to the sun. This is now about three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's where they live. And look at the top. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, I can't reach. Okay, I got this camera on my neck. Anyway, so water them if you water them every day they would love it but the secret is your soil mix you really have to it all starts from the soil mix so doesn't matter how you mix your soil as long as it's free draining it might take a little bit of experimentation for you to find out the the proper soil mix for your different succulents but don't be afraid to try <laughs> you'll be you'll be fine anyway this one now i've done a video of this one which i'm going to upload on new year's eve tomorrow this one is just a cutting of a very beautiful plant and now it's flowering so you get a preview and it's flower I just notice it's flowering so i haven't even watered it yesterday i potted this up i I took a cutting yesterday and then stick them in the soil and haven't watered it yet and now 
it's flowering okay so I'm not going to show you the plant because that's going to spoil the surprise 